continue with this All half right. of the box. Welcome back to the right side of the toolbox. And uh, to start off with <laughs> we have a DSR uh, battery jump box. Um, the good thing about this one is it was the price. I got this on a promo deal from a local park store. And uh, Travis, he's the guy that I work uh, for with, kind of. Um, I'm selfish employed, is like what I like to say. Um, we bought two of them at the same time, and I think we bought them for less than three hundred dollars for both. It was like one hundred and forty. Wow, bucks. these things are like two hundred fifty dollars normally, but they were like some promo that the park store had, and so we bought up two of them because we knew that they'd never be cheaper. Is it the greatest jump box in the world? No, are there better ones out there? Probably, but you know what? In the three years I've had it, it's never given me a problem. But so. Schumacher makes good stuff. Their DSR line is is better than than their non DSR stuff. Um, I, I've never seen an issue with their jump boxes and chargers. No, I mean, like no. I said, I mean, like maybe yeah. in a, maybe in an alternative climate place, it'd be a lot. You know, no, it'd be a lot less useful. To my hand and then I have my Milwaukee charger over there, my Snap-on charger over there on that side. The all it's a triple bank charger. Um, I bought a bunch of 14.4 and 18 volt stuff. I got it for free. You know, this came with one of my many Milwaukee purchases. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of it here. Um, so I just kind of start off. So at the last shop I worked at, I worked right next to my toolbox. So this was like my diag side of the box. And so I used to have a little bit more diag equipment in here, like in it. But it, so I transitioned over here. I moved some of it over to my roll cart. Uh, this is actually the box for my drill pump, but I don't keep my drill pump in here because my drill pump is constantly dirty. Um, this is my oil pressure gauge, and this is a snap-on one. But the cool thing is, is it has some extra storage in there, and I was actually able to put my Mac. Uh, gauge in there and my Mac gauge is actually what I use to check pressures and the transmissions and then it comes with a bunch of fittings and adapters There's a uh, I have an adapter for a uh, LS motor so you can check it uh, oil pressure at the filter instead of going and pulling the O2 or the oil pressure sensor off um, But I do both anyways um, It's a good set This is the snap-on Fuel uh, Fuel ejection set the gauge is actually over here hanging up because I used it the other day uh, actually just dripping the the gas out of it before I put it in my box because otherwise your box will smell like old gas in about an hour and a half and it's got a lot of fittings this is only for gasoline um, we have a, the shop actually provides a diesel you know pressure tester so for anything diesel really we use that uh, this is a run out gauge I have actually two of these the run out gauges are good for you to check the ball joints but I mainly use it to set backlash on um, rear differentials so uh, you set the run out gauge and then the other thing i do is if you i'll show you in a minute what a dana case spreader looks like you know a lot of guys will uh, do a lot of rear end work they'll know what a dana case spreader is so you can move a you can spread a dana rear end uh like 15 thousandths and so you use this whenever you spread the rear end you use the case spreader and so you can use the case spreader that way you're not having to pop the carrier out so um, it's one of my mini run out or my several run out gauges i have and i think this is maco branded i don't know how long i've had it um, this is actually a tape measure that I keep in the box. And, uh, was it you that commented on me keeping my tape measure? I probably was, yeah. So <laughs> it's both a metric and a standard tape measure. And it's from Snap-on and it was like 30 or $40. And the good thing is it's got a lifetime warranty. So I try to keep it as new as possible and I use it for important stuff. So, but if I'm gonna go be messing around or if I need to make some fine cuts, Something like that. I always bust this guy out. I like using it. It's like brand newish. So keep it in the box. Keeps it new looking. Like I said, if you don't like blow cases or boxes, you're not gonna like my tool. Now, certainly there's something to be said for uh, the bulk of a blow molded case and the space that it takes up. However, when it keeps the condition of your tools top notch, it's kind of difficult to argue that. Yeah, well that not only does it keep your tools in good shape, it also notifies you when something can miss it. You know, like, it's like, boom, I, I know I don't have it. Because when I get to my punch and chisel drawer, you'll, you'll kind of see like what I'm talking about as far as like, you know, not having a bullet molded case and you're just like, oh, where's this or this or this? So anyways, um, this is a snap-on valve or uh, orbs tube puller. You know, I use it only in the warm months. As you can tell right now, you can see our breath. <laughs> Uh, this is one of my like four sets of uh, you know, removal tools here, the little spring clamps. And this is a Lyle brand. I think Lyle probably makes all they of them. They make it for everybody. Yeah. But you know, like every time they come on promo, I always seem to get one because you lose one or two. And that's just normal practice. I think I actually broke this one and this one actually got borrowed and lost. 
This is a laying back pressure tester here. I use this every once in a while. Um, it just, you know, whenever I need to use it. Like I said, this was, at my old, old job, this was my diag side of my box. And then I had a compression tester. And uh, pretty much any time I have a misfire, I get this guy out. So I always do a compression test. It takes like, you know, 30 seconds. It's like peace of mind. So, um, you know, the only thing that sucks is sometimes the three valve sockets. The only thing that's missing right now, my vacuum gauge. Uh, like I said, I'm working at a project at the fish shop. And so I have my vacuum gauge. We're doing some tuning on a on an engine. On a carburetor engine, we don't do a lot of that stuff here, but that's fine. That's why I have the other shop. It's kind of where I do all my fun stuff, all my projects. So, so you know, when you see my, you notice I'm wearing the speeder and stuff. When you see the speeder and stuff, we're at the speeder, uh, at the fishing shop. Um, this is my pry bar, you know, drawer. And you can see I got some blank holes here and here. And then when you see my roll cart, you'll understand why. Uh, long picks, Torx handle drivers, long screwdrivers. Uh, these are my first set of screwdrivers with the trace and i'm never going to get rid of these i've actually put off getting them warranty because i don't want to lose them because they don't make these handles anymore so. do you like those handles oh, i still love them better than any other style yeah, i love them really what do you yeah. like most about them uh, they're hard they're easy to clean okay. uh, they got like good leverage on them i love them I, I hate these handles on like these are for pry bars I, I love these a lot more but these are striking cap pry bars and i actually had the original snap-on pry bars that had this you know this type of handle and this color but what happened was the prior, the handle started breaking the snap on didn't honor the or they, they didn't have them anymore they weren't there to replace with so i got updated this whole set which was fine but you know i just i like my old handles so it's just a thing a thing of preference and then these are most pick tools and i use uh, i have the one that's missing i use all the time but i do use most of these a lot and then this is my long pry bar right here. And this, this to give you an idea what my old snap-on handle looked like was this. But this one's actually got a striking cap on it. And I use this guy a lot. But the reason I keep it in this toolbox is I can't lock it up at night if I keep it in my roll cart. So, um, and then this is a scraper. And this is actually a warranty scraper. And I, I just got a brand new one. So I, I've had to, I had that scraper. It used to be blue. And I had to think for, oh, I don't know, 22 plus years, something like that. Um, these are a, a, a few scrapers. These are in the Mac scrapers, and these work good for um, you know chiseling covers off and stuff like that because you can smack them. They have a striking cap on them. Um, the funny story about these: my dad and I were working on his old truck, and uh, we needed like a tiny screwdriver set, and he had one in his truck, and he's like, "Or in his, you know, he brought one with him. He's like, here, son, this is yours now.'" I'm like, "I don't want it." <laughs> <laughs> so I was just stayed in there. I haven't, I haven't moved it out. Uh, this is a terminal kit. These are for a lot of Japanese terminals. You can see it looks new because I hardly ever use it. So, and then I have like a loose screwdriver with probably the torques that I need to tighten up my uh, my clip on my knife with. And then I have some oh, yeah. shorter uh, some shorter picks that are snap-on. And then these are terminal tools also for snap-on. This is a Mac. These are some cleaning brushes. These are only good for round terminals, but they work. I mean, you can use them on some flat terminals. You just get them in there. They're the smaller ones. I got that from Lindsay like years ago. These are some tiny O'Reilly's gave these away for Christmas one year. So I don't think I've ever used them, but I, I can't bring myself to like to 86 of them either. No, because the second you do, yeah, of course, you know what's going to happen. Oh, great. Yeah. Guess what? I don't have. So <laughs> the um, thing that I had for years and never yeah. used and finally got yeah. rid of. So, I mean, it, it's pretty basic. It's just a, it holds like, you know, screwdrivers and pry bars and whatnot. Now, here's the deal with the blow mold case. It's like I can open this up and I know what's missing. It's like, it's not cool. Like, you know, like if I look at something and I don't see it, I know I know it's missing. How much time would you estimate or guess that your average technician wastes trying to find a tool? Can I show you a Travis's tool? <laughs> here, let's walk over here real quick. We'll take a little gander across the shop. We work in probably the smallest shop in the history of automotive repair. It is pretty tiny. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it's boxes and lock. Oh, it is. Okay. There you go. You decide. What would you rather go and look for? Sorry, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Find find your pliers. Yeah, yeah. So, but he's got half the toolbox that I do. So, but the point being, you are going to spend time finding whatever you, it is you're you, looking you for. If you lose something, you're never finding it. Well, that's the other thing of it too. Do you know what's missing? If you're, how much time are you going to say, I, I know it's around here somewhere, not realizing it's missing because you don't see the empty slot 
yeah. that it had. And some guys, especially guys who used to be in the military, they have foam inserts in all their drawers and they cut out I'm not that. For every, that I mean, that's, not, that's not OCD, that's CDO because you have to put it all in order. That is true. <laughs> but man, you want to talk about a setup where you know instantly what you have and don't have, that's it. But it's the least efficient yeah, way I mean, of keeping I'm, your box. I'm not that bad because I would have to have another, you know, XXL box to go along with because, you know, like I'd have just pliers in half the box, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I'm not that bad, but I've worked with guys where you open up their, their plier drawer and, or their screwdriver drawer and you can't find anything. And then everything's broken. Like, how are you ever supposed to know when what if something's missing? Like, you can't leave tools on customers' cars. I and mean, like, if crap is falling off their cars, they're never gonna trust you. Yep. You know, like, you're not just out tools, you're losing faith in a customer. When you have to call a customer and go like, oh, I left my pliers underneath your seat. They're gonna be like, what else did you forget, you mook? You know, like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> So it's real important that you know where all your stuff is. Like that's something that aircraft mechanics, well, I'm not an aircraft mechanic, right? I, I'm not even gonna claim to be as organized or as clean or as thorough as they are, but man, they don't lose their stuff. Because no, you, know, you can't have no. like flyers falling off a plane at 10,000 feet because it's killing whatever it's hitting below. <laughs> and those guys panic too. In fact, I'll tell yeah. you a quick story where um, I used to service um, a, um, an aviation facility where I was in there when it was a big open, I mean, the facilities are large, they're open, there's a lot yeah. of space. And a guy was removing, I think, a spring, right? And he was in there with a pair of pliers trying to move the spring. And he gets the spring off, and then the spring slipped off the end of the pliers. And it, you hear it go, ping! And it was gone. And he couldn't find this thing. All work stopped while everyone searched for this spring because if it got caught up in a mechanism, stuck in an engine somewhere, disaster could strike. Yeah. And these guys take that stuff. So seriously. I haven't seen any rest stops up in the sky yet, have you? Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. Next door down, Dre. Yeah. All right. Um, this is just an extension of my wrench drawer. There's some pipe wrenches in here. Believe it or not, you, I do use these occasionally. Just uh, this one mainly, like when you get a ball that's stuck on a bumper, and you have to take it off. This one works out well. This is good if you're working on like a stuck tie rod in. You know, I have some uh, PZ2s from Stabo, but this also works good to do it. This is another good tool. This is actually my dad gave me. This is a, believe it or not, it's another, you know, crescent wrench that he bought back in the, like the 70s. That's it, a it's made in USA. That's a 24 wrencher. Yeah. Uh, man, how much do you reckon that would cost if you bought that new today? I don't know. I mean, Th those but are, it would be, those it would are be not made cheap. in USA either. It'd no, those are not cheap. Yeah. So uh, my dad, like I said, he worked uh, road construction for years, so they used to use the stuff to service equipment. Yeah. Um, the Stanley guy I probably got when I was a kid somehow, somewhere. Uh, these are Nepix. Um, these work like wrenches because you can adjust them and then you can grip on. When you're working on hydraulic hoses, these are like the greatest thing of all time because you can just open it up and reach and grab the next one. Reach it. You don't have to like unwrench, come over, and then back and just go. And it's like using a, you know, remember Craftsman had those quick wrenches where you could go like, you know, like it was like our, you know, it was supposed to be like that. This is what, you know, if you can work your hand properly, these work out perfectly. Yeah, and the nice thing about these is these are the Nipex pliers wrenches. They're smooth parallel jaws, so that no matter how how wide you open the handles, the jaws are always parallel. So you get a gripping force that far exceeds regular pliers. It's more like an adjust, uh, more like a wrench, and they don't slip. There's no slop in the mechanism like you find it in an adjustable wrench. Yeah. But like I said, if you work on hydraulic hoses, any kind of hydraulic hoses, you will never ever want to mm. ever use anything else. And then I bought, this is a big set of snap on wrenches in the black variety. And it goes up to two inches and it's down to an inch and eight. And I bought these second hand. Uh, Lindsay knows that for a fact because I got them from him. <laughs> <laughs> Broke some hearts with that one too, as I recall. Oh, a lot man, of yeah. guys were vying for this. Yeah, it was a hell of a deal. I can't believe anybody did, nobody pulled the trigger on it. I think it was like 200 bucks. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. If, if, I, if I remember this deal right, it happened a while back. A guy asked me to consign them for him. I said, sure. He told me how much you want it for him. Like, that makes perfect sense because I can sell them at a small profit. And uh, and a lot of guys were just tripping over themselves to to buy it for some reason. But you had already had dibs on it. So it was yours. And uh, a I mean, lot I'm of sure hearts were broken. I saw that thing and I was like, because this works out good. It's like yeah. an extra set of wrenches. And you can tell they're step on because they're rusted. Uh, <laughs> 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 hey, I mean, like, I even put the paper on there and it still got them. Yeah. But uh, that's why I keep the paper on there. 
Um, it was just, it was kind of, a, it's not really an impulse buy, but it's one of those things where I'm at the position in my career where I don't have to buy something if I don't want to. But if I find something that makes my job easier, I'm going to pull the trigger on it every time. So that's the advantage I have over a guy that's just starting out in the business. It's not, I mean, it's like, it's not because I, I'm better than everybody else. I just, I'm in the position now. I've been doing this long enough. I've, I've you know, paid my dues. You know, I was able to do this, so uh, that's why I like having. And the other thing is, I always view myself as like my own little like independent franchise. I want to have my like all my tools. I want to have all the tools. Like if I don't have a tool, then it's on me. So I am, like I said, I am like self ish employed. So you know, I do like to have it. So back to my wrenches, and then everybody's got like some modified wrenches. And if you've ever worked on a GM car from the early 1990s, you know this is used to take apart the tire steering pump or take it off the engine. So this is a special. Uh, Nichols uh, manufacturing design here. <laughs> so, uh, this is another wrench I just had to bend. This is probably to take off a O2 sensor. I, I have no idea why I did that. I don't know. Uh, the two chrome distributor wrenches are both snap ons, and then the black ones are Maco. And, like I said, at, at the Fitzgerald shop, we work on a lot of stuff that uses distributors and carburetors and all that. So, they do get used. They don't get used a lot here every once in a while. But I keep them here because I don't like to. Like I said, I had like four sets of tools. I don't like to drag them all around with me because distributor wrenches get used so, so little that I just grab them when I need them. So I just keep them here. I know where they are. It's easy enough and it fills up the drawer. So, yeah. All right, next. This next drawer, I think this one, uh, yep, this is the punch of chills drawer here. And now you can see what I'm talking about, about not having to blow mold case or blow mold cases or organization. You're kind of like thumbing through. These are all round punches. These are all doo-doo punches right here. These are all, they're modified in some way, shape or form. This is actually a tap extractor, or a, uh, I'm sorry, a, a, yeah, a tap extractor. I broke a tap one day and I had to cut this in there to extract the tap. And I ordered some tap extractors there at my house. I just haven't brought them up here. But when they break off into a hole that you're chasing threads on, because I'll talk about that in a minute, but you'll need something to get them out with. Um, these are flat chisels. These are snap-ons. These are Mac and snap-ons. But these are all round punches. Some of them are flat, and then some of them have these little dimples on them, like this guy. So you know, that's the only difference between them. And I use them all. Uh, the doo doo punches I use, like if I gotta go and if I gotta <clears throat> just beat the hell out of something, and you know you're gonna mar the tip, doo doo punch. Um, these are just some more punches. This is a drift. I, I think I found this in a piece of equipment. It was like in a pile of grease. <laughs> like I, was, I did a hydraulic hose on a bobcat. I think it, I dug it out of the depths of hell, you know. <laughs> uh, this came out of the back of my dad's truck. This is like a homemade punch, man. This is great. I love this thing. I use this every once in a while. But it's like you can kind of punch around corners because it's, it's, it's a, curved. got a nice curve to it. <laughs> I don't know whoever made it. Thanks. <laughs> uh, this is a pickle fork one. I don't use this a ton. Um, there was a while. There was a while I had to use it. Um, these chisels, these are lifetime warranty. That's why they're good. I mean, this guy got annihilated in the first use, so the Snap-on guy's gonna be pissed off when I get it back to him. But, oh well, they shouldn't, well, shouldn't offer lifetime warranty if you don't want me to bring it. <laughs> um, I got a long chisel right here. Um, this one, um, I use probably less than I used to. And uh, I, I use a lot of water pumps, or to knock off fan clutches, but I quit doing it because I learned how to use my tool right. Um, that's kind of the right tool for the job. These are Mayhew long pry bars, or not pry bars, long punches. And I love these things, these are my, some of my favorite tools. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know how much I like Mayhew tools, you'll see them. I post about them all the time, I love Mayhew tools. Uh, they're the oldest, most continuous punch and chisel manufacturer in the United States. And they're from somewhere in, Podunk, Massachusetts. I didn't know there's Podunk, Massachusetts, but oh, Lindsay, there's a lot of Podunk. Lindsay, you know, Lindsay, I, knows, Lindsay knows a little bit about Massachusetts. I grew up in Boston. There's a lot of Podunk yeah. in Massachusetts. Oh, so, but anyways, you know uh, who else is in uh, my hometown? Actually, Fowler. Ah, Pursuit. yeah, they uh, they guy just found that out because they shipped us uh, actually Roberts. <laughs> 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 That's a long story, but uh, we just got back something we sent to Fowler for warranty, and I noticed on the uh, the return address, I'm like in Newton, Massachusetts. I'm like, what? And I looked it up on a map, and sure enough, there it was, in my, right in my hometown. I never knew they were there. Oh man, where I grew up. Yeah, it's good stuff. I yeah. mean, like I said, you, you can't beat it. The quality's there. They build punches and chisels for yeah. other companies like Mac, and. Um, 
they're a little bit, they're stamped a little bit differently probably because Travis has a max set and I have a, 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 a Mayu set and mine are just a little, sized a little bit differently. But that could either be from the die or the tooling they're using or it could be to max specifications. Mac may want something like a certain way. Yeah. But that's who's making them. And then the cool thing is, is they do use global source parts because I'm sure there's somewhere in you know the world you have to go get plastic. I don't know where you know I don't know all the all the means about it, but they handle all their global cases. They make all their stuff like in house. Now some of their resources they may get from abroad, but it's U.S. steel. It's made in Massachusetts. Um, the cases are made in Mass. You know like yep. it's a good product. I, I don't know any complaints. And if you've ever used any kind of Mayhew products, you would know like quality instantly. This is probably made by Mayhew, but it's branded as Matco or Snap I, Matco. I believe it is. Mayhew manufactures for Matco, Mac, and Cornwell. Yeah. I don't know if they manufacture for Snap On too. I don't think they do. I think the Snap On stuff is made somewhere like in Indiana. Okay. But, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they don't. These are some brass punches. These are some cleaners for seven way trailer trailer plugs. Uh, like I said, we work out, you know, in kind of in the country. So you work on a lot of trailers and trucks and stuff like that. Um, this is a door latch. This was like coming off the Mack truck. I think I paid a dollar for it. Uh, Maybe less. It may have been free. Um, I'm not kidding. No, it might have been. I was desperate to get rid of that, as I recall. Yeah. That, no. I don't know. I got it from you or if I got it from Kyle. You might have got it. Well, I can't. I don't know now because I had one that never sold. I think you gave it to Travis. And Travis tried to give it to me and the cow. Gave me it. Uh, so he's like, I tried to give you that earlier. Why did, why did you take it then? I'm like, I forgot. You know, as you can tell, we've used it a ton. Um, these are just uh, punch of chisels with the soft grip. The only thing I don't like about these is this grip slides up and down on the chisel. So it's not that real, it's not real user friendly. Um, these are all kinds of wrenches. You know, like this is what I was talking about with the quick collet. You know, flat like, wrenches. Yeah, yeah, this is to take the collets loose so you can change out the, change out the tooling. Um, these are all saw blades. For my sawzall, I have an air saw as well, but the air saw is at the other, is at the fishy shop. Actually, I think it might be getting it repaired. Did I get, no, maybe I didn't give it to you. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, these are miscellaneous wrenches. There's some other saw blades in here. Uh, I, I, this used to be cleaner. I just kind of gave up towards the end of 2020. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, this Lyle cheap piece of crap right here. This is, I use this on Duramax, uh, the lower oil pan to help break it free. You tap it in on one side and you can, you can use it as a pry bar. And then Was that a gasket scraper? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it works great. Cause every tool can be used as a pry bar. <laughs> <laughs> I got it for free. So if I break it, I'm throwing it away. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to try to get a warranty first, but then I'm going to get these are the, cell, the automatic centering punches. They're all right, they're kinda, I don't really like them. Um, some other cool stuff here. This is an old, uh, an old driver and you're not supposed to use a regular hammer to drive them, but every once in a while you need one. So this thing, I think I, this is Lyle branded. I think I bought it, you know, probably 25 years ago and I don't mind just whipping the piss out of it because <laughs> there's no warranty on it and there's aluminum. And you know, I just have to beat the crap out of something. This actually came out of a, I, I know the vehicle this came out of because I took it out. This came out of a truck that destroyed the rear end of the carrier. And this pin, it actually, it broke the, there used to be a hole right here because this is the what holds the spider gears in. And this had a bolt that went through there. This bolt had backed out and because the, the kid was doing like, just, it was like an epic burnout day or something. And so I didn't back the bolt out and this pin fell out and the carrier exploded and he was like, just completely dead in the truck. And so, this was like one of the first rear ends I ever got to like take apart and like diagnose the problem. What ended up happening? We ended up getting a whole other rear end. We didn't even fix it. <laughs> it was something just like <laughs> the case was destroyed. And so it was, it was like a first time customer who came in. And so my boss at the time goes, take this thing, you'll put it in your box. You're always going to use this as a drift. And so 25 years later, so I have, there you go. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> Um, and then these are some of those adapters when you need to use them for a press in the press they're, they're good they're aluminum but they kind of mush mush in the shape so that's my punch and chisel drawer oh no and then let's see this next drawer i think this is the next drawer yeah that blows um dirt and grime away <laughs> <laughs> bad joke dude all right <laughs> so just i'll be fast with this this is my chain bar um, you could always use a chain bar for all sorts of jobs, holding stuff. I use a lot um, whenever you're doing, um, sometimes you have to hold like pulleys or, or uh, yokes whenever you're removing the nut or, or torquing it down. This is my original blow gun here. This is a vacula and if I could ever figure out how to fix it, I probably would. It still works, it just, you lose a lot of air through the, 
through the does it leak yeah it uh, leaks a little bit but like i said i've had it like since day one almost so i don't really want to get rid of it this is typhoon it's the same as this once i put the high flow air fittings on it'll match this one this came as a mac this was in a set and the reason i got it because i think the tips came free with the set and the tips were like a hundred dollar value the guns were like 40 bucks i'm like yeah twist my arm. yeah i don't know why those tips are expensive but they are and you know when I, we sell the titan ones on our trucks where yeah. <clears throat> we sell the titan four inch gun like the vacula one yeah with the three inch with the three tip kit if you bought the tips by themselves there's some stupid expensive price the whole kit with the guns like 20 bucks less than the tips by themselves yeah so we don't even bother with the yeah. tips we just sell the whole kit this is on promo and the tips came with it so yeah. i'm like oh, oh yeah that's like, a no-brainer I, I bought it for the tips oh yeah what <laughs> <laughs> but this is another mac promo i think this is actually a dewalt tool uh, i've only used it like once or twice it works good if you're just trying to get around the corner under dash stuff you know you can kind of hold it in place and you know get to some blind areas this is a seal a seal hook you, know, you can just go pop seals out with it um this is the lyle uh, magnet i think the magnet ripped out and i got pissed off so i just sitting in there until i feel fit to to warranty it out these are some cheapo heel bars from harbor freight these are lyle rebranded as mac carbon scrapers these actually work pretty good i used them the other day they're like when you're working on old like paper gaskets that are really stuck on blocks i mean like these things really do pop it off so it, you know they're they're worth the money this is another mac scraper i just i didn't have room in the screwdriver door so i just stuck stuffed it in here this is the gear wrench indexable pry bar it's the big one and, that's the extendable one too yeah and uh, it extends there and the head's indexable you press that button it, it works good i mean i use it a lot um I use it along in you know alongside of that one all the time. Hmm. I'm gonna buy the whole set. It's just you know one of those things where I'm just waiting for it to go on sale. Do it over time, yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm just not you know like like I said I'm not in a position where I need it, but when it comes on sale I'm gonna buy it. So um, and these are all like grabber tools and magnets and more magnets and I have more magnets in other places as well. Um, as you can tell, I uh, replaced my Dominator uh, Street pry bar with a screwdriver because you know they're pry bars too. <laughs> 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 no, it's in my roll cart. Um, this. So I bought a whole lot of tools off the Snap-on guy. He basically was having like a clearance sale and he was trying to generate some cash in 2020. Like I can't blame a guy for doing it. So he condensed a bunch of like open sets and stuff like that. And he had like this up to 80% off deal. And I just walked in there with cash and wow. you know, cash makes a lot of deals go a lot smoother. So um, I was able to buy like this and I'll show you some other screwdrivers I bought. And I bought some pliers. <laughs> I mean like I could in like those, uh, in those, uh, in that spanner wrench i bought those all as a set like i said i paid like pennies on the dollar i mean that was like super good deal and that's why you save your money you don't get committed to having this big payment because when you have a big payment then you never if you're financially strapped you're never in a position where you can go and actually have like buying power instead of like you know the seller's got all the selling power when you have when you have a load of debt and a lot of like you know cash you have buying power i mean like i can go and buy something for a lot less because i can pay for it all at once and you're always going to get a discount with cash i promise you because there's even if even if they're going to report it for taxes they don't have to go and run their credit card machine it saves them money they'll give you some kind of discount so there's always a cash discount out there as you can tell we're both freezing to death right now too <laughs> <laughs> these are the dominator straight pry bars um i just haven't put the the, the two in my toolbox yet i was kind of doing some rearranging my roll cart um eventually these will both be in my roll cart um, this is going to stay in here it's just a backup these are Lyle hood props. They work good. So, I mean, they're just hood props. There's nothing special about them. This one's old. This one's new. That's about the only the only difference between the two. Um, next drawer down is some taps and dies. Um, this is a Ford for three valve tool. If you know what that is, you know, you don't ever want to use it. This is a snap on extractor screws. These things suck. You don't ever want to use these things ever. Um, these are you know, you just drill them in there. They got these little guys. You're not supposed to over drill the hole or, you know, walk the bit, but they don't really work out that way. And this they, is the one with the straight fluted yeah. extractors. And it's not my favorite. I've used it a couple times. It does work, but you just have to go really, 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 really slow. Don't be in a hurry if you're extracting uh, broken bolts. Well, you probably should. Yeah. I mean, in general, you should. Well, but I mean, but like yeah. if you think you're just going to go whistle through it, you need to really mm. rethink it. Take your time. Drill it slow. Go slow. Check yourself every minute, you know take your time because it'll make the difference between doing it right and doing it again. So, or pulling the head off and replacing it. So, or whatever you break. Yep. Um, it is what it is. I mean, drilling broken bolts is not fun. You just, you know, that's why I have this set. 
I have left-handed drill bits there. I have the spiraled extractors. I have the straight fluted extractors. And then we have the twisted fluted extractors. And they're all, they're all different brands because you, you just gotta have some variety. Um, these are lug nut, install, or lug nut stud installers. And they're just in a, a stud box here. These are additional taps and dies because you know, whenever you buy a tap set, they never give you the most use of the 12 by 1.25 tap and die. It's the most ridiculous thing. Like, why? This I thing, never understood this thing, that. This thing is used in like <clears throat> half, the, half the Japanese cars. Yeah, no kid Dino has them. Yeah, and they don't put it in there. Nope. And then this set right here is Snap on branded, but I think Irwin makes it. Irwin makes that. Yeah, one. and. And if I would bag on somebody, I hate these taps. They're the worst. And sometimes they're labeled as something they're not. Like my 3S16 tap wasn't a 3S16. It was, I don't know what it was. I mean, it was, it was labeled. It wasn't 3S24. It was like a metric. No, it was like a three size with a metric thread on there. And that, that's a regular thing. Cause the snap on guy was like, oh yeah, that happens all the time. So I had yeah. to go through and check all these damn taps and dies to make sure they're all sized properly. And you know, it's, it's a pretty standard kit where it, it's got, you know, the the, the regular old tap wrenches here, but if you compare this one, which is why we went to the gear wrench branded ones on our trucks, as opposed to the Irwin ones, the gear wrench ones are a nicer set. Yeah, they're and built, to, some, they're built to a higher grade. And then I have some bottoming taps and some thread chasers yeah. as well. They're just at the other shop right now. Um, and then this guy, this is actually a Harbor Freight set right here. And these are the big uh, taps and dies. And they go down to the smaller ones, and believe it or not, I actually like these a lot better than the Snap on or the Irwin. That's ones. a good set. The, yeah, the jumbo ones on here were particularly I, good. I think it was like you'll save a ton of money over I think the it was cost under of under hundred bucks. Yeah, they're not they're not expensive at all. Now, this was like a Sunday purchase. Like I, I knew I was going to need it <clears> in the upcoming week, so I went to town and I bought you know the the Harbor Freight one. But like I said, it's not really convenient to me. This is a seal puller installer. You work on a lot of timing belts. You know what this is. I use it a lot. Um, you can't go wrong using it. There's some other pieces in here. This is a blue point. Like I said, this came off the Snap-on truck. It was on Uber clearance sale, and so uh, I spot it from there. But it's labeled Blue Point, and I can't remember who makes it. I can't either. I just sold one too. Uh, it's like it's not Lyle, but it's no, something. it's, it's uh, private brand tools PBT. Yeah, but they. I mean, like yep. they're branded. Every every tool company's got one. They're all branded. You know, whatever their manufacturer is, they work good. Yeah. You know, if you, if you, new tech, if you're moving up to doing timing belts, if you get off the old suspension brake jobs and you're moving up by this, you won't go wrong. Or better yet, believe it or not, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and bag on this set. Buy this guy. This is a blue point, and then the the rest of the installer is right here. This guy right here is way better. Mm. And it, the seals, it just pushes the seals in so much smoother. And you know, whatever, whoever makes it, it's made in the USA, which I can't believe because it's Blue Point. That's but, interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it works great. It's a fantastic tool. But I use it in conjunction with this. I use all of them. So, like I said, right tool for the job. At least you try. I, I try not to go and, and shortcut too much. And then this is the old Linux saw here that I modified. And if you've ever worked on a uh, GM throttle body, a Tibby truck, <laughs> and you've ever had the heater hose fitting break off. This saw I used before I had an air saw, and I used to go and I'd saw the, the broken piece of fitting into four pieces, and then I'd just pop out the pieces after I got done. It made for a long day, but you know, it worked. And then this is a tubing bender. I just have it in here because there's open spot, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, the next drawer down is going to be some more pullers and installers. This is the Mac. Um, spud kit here. This is uh, these are all your door panel spuds. I use these a lot. Um, there's a different one for different applications. They all work. They all work for their intended purpose. I like using them. Uh, believe it or not, you know, when you when you go look at uh, factory service manuals, they'll have like a picture of a, a particular spud, and they're actually these. So they do they do serve a purpose having them. And I like keeping them in the blow little case because they're organized in the number and the where they're supposed to be. Um, you know, like I don't think the kit was real expensive, but it's always good to have. And it does eat up space in the toolbox. It may not be the most efficient use of space, but that's where it is. Um, this next piece is steering wheel puller, and then I have like some smaller pieces in it for pulling other stuff off, like that guy right there. Um, this is to go depress the, uh, the steering or to go pull the steering wheel, and you can also depress the uh, 
the the little lock plate so you can get the take the turn signal switch off and then this, this is another piece you use to pull there's like a a deal you got to pull out sometimes with a turn signal switch so um just kind of short and long but anyways the stereo puller i bought this on amazon or ebay or something like that i think it was under fifty dollars so it's a good tool you don't use it a lot and when you need it you need it all right these are part of a, a kd set but they could they're probably branded as gear wrench too they are kd was the was what gear wrench became this is my favorite <laughs> tool that i have right here it, this is otc Lindsay actually warranted it for me yeah but this is a tie run and puller but I, man i use this all the time it's, it like don't use a pickle fork use this guy i mean this guy is it's so much more efficient use it makes it number one you're not killing everybody in the shop with an air hammer going Burr! you know you're going and just popping it and it take and it just pops the the tie right in right out it was so efficient um this is for popping pitman arms off this is for a larger pitman arms for like on the big fords like the f-350s and whatnot i've never used this ball joint separator ever um these tie right in ones i've used once or twice these are some snap-on drill bits and my most proud thing is they're all there uh -huh. Uh -huh. i paid good money to get them all put in there oh, <laughs> uh these are okay like i said i have a couple different brands of drill bits i'll show you my other set in here in just a second <clears throat> i got them in a different drawer um they're good for what they are i mean the half inch bit they're not none of them are warranty but the half inch bit i have laid into a piece of like three eight steel like with my with my milwaukee drill and not lit off and i didn't burn a bit up so the smaller ones you would you would annihilate but um for certain things it's always it's just good to have a different variety of a bit i just that's all i can say all right, um, on to this next two. This is pretty cool. This is a live on it. This is, this is the last thing Tim sold me when he was a Snap-on guy. <laughs> this is actually a, a driver set. So what you can do is you lock it in. It's got a striking cap on it. It's got that handle on there. And believe it or not, it is fun to use. That's a way better upgrade for their handle too. That handle used to be more like that aluminum one that all mushroomed out. Yeah, yeah. But then they right upgraded here, that handle to that man, piece. It's you, a beautiful handle. It, when you're driving seals and oh, races yeah. and stuff in, I mean, like, you're just like, whack, whack, whack. And it's just, it's comfortable and it's fun to use because, I mean, like, you really, whenever you feel, whenever you're hitting it, you feel like it's making a solid push and contact in it. It just, like I said, it's fun to use. I enjoy using it. You know, that's why you buy nice stuff. So when you use it, you're like, yeah, it, it feels good. Fun. Yeah. Shocker. Who never thought that? Nice. All right, and then this is the Mac version, and I'm real super careful with this because it's just, I just keep it a little bit cleaner. Um, it's just, I mainly use it for seals. I don't ever use it for bearing races because that's what that dude sets for in the drawer up. Um, <laughs> I just like, I just like beating the hell out of that one. This one I like to keep a little bit nicer, and then I use a, either a non-marring hammer, or mainly I just use a rubber mallet. So, or a rubber dead blow, or whatever you want to call it. All right. Oh no! I know it's. Oh no! Oh no! We pulled the drawer out too far. I might want to pause the camera for a second. I'm gonna cuss. Oh! Oh! oh, oh no oh. cussing needed. Look at oh, that. Oh, Kenny Rusty Finney. All right. So lockout kit. Still waiting on some pieces of my lockout hey. kit, Lindsay. <laughs> All right. So I'll go through this. This is a recent purchase, and I hate it as much as I hated the Milwaukee one. I thought I'd try it because I saw the snap on guy using it and it sucks just as bad. So, for sale, 14.4, brushless right angle die grinder. So, hint to anybody ever making one, make sure it works for more than 13 seconds. Yeah, they're, the die grinders that, the cordless die grinders anyone has are really not intended for anything but a lightweight application. You, you, you put any kind of load on that motor. Well. I figure if I keep it in the box, I can probably, I'm only paying a rental fee for it. You know yeah, what I mean? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've used it like three or four times. And I just don't like it. Yeah. Um, I like it. I had the Milwaukee version of it. I hated the Milwaukee one too. Uh, the only difference between the Milwaukee one and this one is this one's got a switch on it instead of a paddle. So you can just go on. But that's also what sucks is because it turns off just as much as the Milwaukee mm. one does. And so you're over here just dicking with the button. But you can dial speed in. You can dial speed in, and it it revs high. But you know, like most of the stuff you're putting in this collet, you don't want to be on the receiving end of like 33,000 right. RPM. Like you're like, eh, I'm getting out of the way. So that's why I like using the pneumatic angle grinders because you know what, the compressor never never knows the difference. So, but like I said, 
Robert might be a life Christmas present or something, or an early birthday present. Nice. I don't know. Um, this is a stethoscope. I've had this guy for as long as I've worked on cars. It was like um, the guy I worked for at the time, he had it and he moved on to a different one. So he gave me this one and I actually cleaned it before I used it. Oh. So, shocker. Uh, another part of my lockout kit, uh, the other part of the lockout kit, uh, it's kind of a, a work in progress. This is why you don't loan your tools out to idiots. So, Lindsay knows who I loaned it out to, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a slide hammer. It's a Mac, but I think it's just rebranded. I think it's... I think it's OTC. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, everybody's seen a slide hammer kit. Uh, this is a bearing puller set. I think it's Mac, or it's uh, it's Mac, but it works whenever you're pulling um, side bearings or side you know bearings off a, di a carrier and a differential. Uh, do a lot of you would do a lot of rear differential work, so it comes in handy. Down here, this is a uh, like an on the car flaring, a metric flaring tool, and flaring kit. I've got another flaring kit in there that I use more often. This is another one. Like I said. The snap-on truck, he was having a clearance sale. This all came off his clearance sale. And you just can't beat the prices on it. So there's some flaring kits right there. Um, just I bought them, I stuck them in there. This is uh, for rear axles when you're pulling out rear axle bearings. You know, the, the, the one thing I like about this over a lot of them is it has this washer there and you can roll that nut down. So whenever you're pulling like the bearing and the seal all together, you just don't have crap fly all over the shop. It's all still contained on the end of the slide hammer once you pull it off. So. That's what the gear advantage of the gear wrench one was over the other options. So, like that, that, and Lindsay had it on the truck. So, this is a mini slide hammer, this is snap on. I've had this one for probably 20 years. And this is another thing where I keep it in the box and keep moisture off of it. And I've had to, I've had to get this warranty out before, and I think I've had to get one of the jaws warranty out before. But when you're pulling seals on like a GM transmission or you're pulling a, a pilot bearing or something like that it comes in handy because it's small it's compact and you can just beat the hell out of it so uh, but it's still in good shape there's that this is a calvan master master discount set and i bought it for like one piece out of here and i've used this thing probably about six times in my entire life so i just used it for these guys right here just disconnecting here of course so you can tell, and then I had a, I, I wrote all the sizes down on here. I used to use it a lot more, like at the other shop. This used to be in the top drawer because I used it a lot. But once I started using a roll cart setup, I kind of transitioned over to something a little bit different. So I still have it. I'm not getting rid of it. It's still a usable tool. So it's got some usable stuff in it. It's just not my go-to go-to tool. You can tell it used to get pretty dirty. <laughs> And then these are the worst drawer liners in the history of drawer liners. And the snap only will tell, even tell you that, or at least their dealers will. So. And then this is actually a, a, a like a pilot bearing puller. It's a smaller puller. You can get it with adjustable jaws. I just use it for pilot bearings. I bought that many moons ago. It, it was just one of those things where it was uh, the best option that they had. This is the Mac tool or the Mac drill bits. These are warranted for life. Every size. They're the yep. only company that does it, which makes it worth the four hundred dollars that they charge their twenty. That much. The twenty-nine piece set. It's the cobalt grade bits. They're really good bits, and they're the only ones that put a warranty in every size. But they charge four hundred bucks. Think, if I, you got the, you can get them on sale for less. But I think they're on promo. I think it was like <clears> three thirty something. That's maybe, not bad. Maybe it's yeah. less. Maybe it's two eighty. Uh, it was some. It was a good deal. Like, yeah, compared to their their list price, yeah. But like, I think that it was after you had stopped being the Mac dealer, and then we went for a while without a Mac dealer, and then we showed up with a new Mac dealer, and I mean, like, they were like, they had these sales on there, and I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, three hundred bucks, yeah, duh. Yeah. <laughs> I promise you, that's a pretty good deal. So the only thing in this drawer that I don't really like is my my my. Uh, what should we call it? Lockout kits? Yeah, my lockout kit. My airbag failed on this one, so I just went and bought airbags online. You, know, you can buy like, uh, you know, you can actually buy airbags at Home Depot. They sell them over in like the plumbing area. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Along with the shaker siphon, you know, like the Arkansas wow. credit card. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised that Arkansas credit card doesn't get more love on your channel. <laughs> I mean, like, it's such, a, it's such a great joke. Nobody ever laughs at that one. I'm disappointed. I'm going to start commenting on that one. I'm not going to put this guy back in here right now. Well, well maybe not. Oh, we'll hold off. I'm gonna leave this guy out. 
All right, so we go over here. This top drawer, this is where I keep all my time, my, where I write all my time. I keep all my like my paperwork that I need to is in this drawer. I'll just give you a little peek. So there's a title for our car that I have on the shop. Um, uh, I got some aux cables for my sound bar, some other stuff in here. This is like my personal drawer, but this is where I keep all my time sheets. So I keep it out of the weather. Even though, even though it works on commission, they know what that's for. So um, for those of you that don't know, when you work on commission, you have to keep track of your own time. So otherwise you don't get paid. So I, I work in a two inch shop and the guy I work with wouldn't do that. But I'm just telling you at other shops that if you work on flag rate or commission, whatever you want to call it, you got to keep track of your time. And if you work at a dealership, you need to keep track of your time because they will screw you out of money. They, they don't care. All right, next drawer down. It's the electrical test connectors and stuff. Um, I have some back, I have some other stuff in my roll cart. This is an AC sniffer, believe it or not. This little guy works pretty good. So whenever you're looking for some tight, some small leaks, AC sniffer, it's a pretty good deal. I bought that online, it went real expensive. It's an extra roll, uh, Super 33 scotch tape there, or you know, electrical tape. Um, some T-pin connectors. This is a battery for my, um, it's a battery for my UV light, but that one's at my house because I upgraded, I'll show you all in a minute. Um, some just diagnostic connectors. These are uh, pins. Um, you know, piercing probes, but I'll never use them anymore. I back pin everything because a um, couple reasons. Number one, whenever you pierce the wire, you're damaging the wire. The insulation's on there for a reason. Otherwise, all the wires would be exposed. Um, the reason why you do that is AC voltage travels on the outside of the insulation, and so it can corrupt what's on the inside. I, I may be wrong on that, but I, I, you know, from all the service classes I went to, that was kind of the deal. The thing is, you get corrosion in there, and corrosion will ruin a wire in a heartbeat. We don't see it a lot in Texas, but you know, if you follow Eric O at South Main Auto, he talks about the green crusties. Yeah, he's in New York. And uh, and yeah. every time they go and they touch a wire, they go in. They use fingernail polish or liquid tape or something like that, and I've got liquid tape over there. I'm not rolling fingernail polish in my toolbox. <laughs> this is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some other various pieces that go to the power probe set. There's some back probes in here too. Uh, some miscellaneous alligator clips, a spark tester, some other stuff. This is pretty cool right here. This is a five volt reference. So if you need to apply, give a five volt reference out of uh, out of your power probe instead of a 12 volt reference, you can give it a, a standing five volt reference, and then you can use it in conjunction with this piece, so you can have it all on five volt reference and all time five volt reference. So yeah, when you yeah, otherwise you're putting out 12 volts when you go to yeah, do a so power you're, injection, so and you'll fry your five volt subsystem. So when you're trying to when you're trying to cheat and lie to a computer, you can go with it. <laughs> and uh, the good news is, so if you're in California, this will give you cancer, but anywhere else in America, you'll be fine. You're can so. yeah, cancer free. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I just love Neil in California. Any chance I get? <laughs> Be my new goal on life so I, I meant to do that too i was looking at it yesterday going oh that's what we're gonna do we're gonna use that one <laughs> so if you're from california i'm not sorry <laughs> this is part of a mac promo right here this is a pretty good little guy here's a scope on a rope basically but it's got you know it shows power and ground it doesn't have the little display board on it which i thought it did but oh well i use it every once in a while i don't use it all the time because my go-to tool is a power probe i use my power probe all the time it's my absolute favorite thing to use so golly my hands are too cold to grab the sip on it we're gonna have to kick the heater on here in a minute or two a battery <laughs> change or something i'm not gonna make it much longer <laughs> it's about it's probably about 39 degrees in the shop right now yeah it's a little it chilly is, yeah Lindsay's over here wearing short sleeves i'm at least in my canadian tuxedo i'm, I'm so. going back to my New England days. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm adjusting again. This is a relay jumper here. These are all right. Um, I'm missing one because uh, they got borrowed. <laughs> That's why you don't loan tools. Luckily, I work in a shop where the only other guy, I'm only pretty much the one to, you know, that loses stuff. But uh, this is, uh, you want to test like amp draw on, on, on circuits. Like fuel, when you're testing for a bad fuel pump, a lot of times a fuel pump with age will have a higher amp draw, and this is a dead giveaway. You can go to the relay and you can just jump across it. And, and they have the switch too, which is yeah. nice. And you can, you can detect it. Like I said, like if you get a car that comes in and it, like a, so I'll give you an example, like a GM truck from the early 2000s. It'd come in and it would start and run, but they said like, I went out this morning and it didn't start. It spun over, but this, it got nothing. What it was is a fuel pump. It has a bad spot in it basically. And you know, it just, it didn't work. So what, what they did is whenever they loaded on the wrecker, it jostled it around and it like freed it up. So a dead giveaway on that one though, is you can take your, um, your scope, your, your lab scope and you go 
put this guy out where the relay, the fuel pump relay goes, and you can watch the amperage and you can watch the little humps and you can kind of detect is it over RPM, you know, does it have higher amp draw? Stuff that you're probably not going to catch with a power pro and definitely not going to catch with a test light. But, you know, if you just go and use your scope and you do that, you'll catch it every once in a while. I'm not saying it's all the time, but every once in a while. In most shops you work at, whenever you had that problem, you just put a fuel pump in it anyways. You just had to make sure that you didn't have any high resistance between the relay and the pump. So you didn't have any like burned wires, any damaged wiring, anything like that. So it's just another way to check stuff. So that way you're not, when a customer's got to come back, they lose faith in you. So this is one of those things that just to keep comebacks from coming back, so. Oh man, I got another drawer that's fighting me. All right, this next drawer is riveting. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Um, this is the only non Harbor Freight rivet gun in here. There's a blue point, which they're probably all in the same place. Uh, this is a large rivet gun. This works good. It's from Harbor Freight. It's like the cheapest thing out there, but it works. It's fantastic. I love using it. I have some different rivets. I have some more rivets in this cabinet over here as well. But uh, there's some rivets in here, some plastic rivets. Uh, that's what this guy's for. It's a plastic riveter. It works okay. It's not my favorite tool. Uh, everybody has one there. I think they all work the same. I was, I haven't found Pretty any, much, yeah. I haven't found a tool truck branded one that's worked any better than this yeah. one. Sorry, I got the minor hiccups. All right, uh, this one. Let's get hammered on this one. Uh, the believe puns not, keep coming. Oh man, <laughs> I tell you what. So this is a Harbor Freight hammer. The reason I like it so much is I beat this flat right there, so it makes a great drift. It's a drift with a handle. <laughs> right. So if you're hammering something, you're right. You just put it. And, you're not like you're not like choked up on it with your hand like that you know exposing your thumb to imminent danger you know you're just over here like you know so there you go hmm. that's that's the only reason i keep that hammer it's only for drift purposes um this guy right here this is the ch60 i think it's like four and a half pounds or something like that i think it's was it 60. Well, yeah, but I think it's, it's four and a half sixty pounds. ounce, so whatever that. Really, yeah, but I think that number weight, that number is the weight in ounces. Yeah, but if you look on the Mac Flyer, it's got a different weight on it. Like it says CH sixty, but it's like four point seven five pounds or some goofy number like that. <laughs> I know they call it sixty ounces, but in the Flyer they call it something else. This thing right here works great for everything. I love it. It's got a nice, you know, good handle on it, and you can really swing it pretty hard. So if you're not swinging a hammer, this it sure beats you know kicking a tire that's stuck on the hub with your foot. That's a good one. This is a non-marring snap-on hammer. With the brass ones. Yeah, I like these because they're all different colors and you can see them. And then, you know, everybody all, like in the shop, everybody either had black or red handles or green handles. And so, like at the shop I used to work. So I got these and this red handle one, I think was a replacement for another hammer I had. And at the time, snap-on was back-ordered on hammers. And so this was the only one on the truck. That's why I had to go with the red handle. So, mm. otherwise, I think it was a high biz. So. But that's why I love, none of my tools match. I kind of like it that way because I know which ones are mine. So I used to work in shop with like five other guys, and you know, you didn't want your stuff to match because because people would go and like, oh, that looks like mine. I'm like, yeah, you know. So, but last drawer of the big box, and this is packed full of stuff. This is my UV light, and if Lindsay will be so kind to open my drawer, my roll car. Which one? Uh, four four down. One, two, three. They gave me the 14 4 flashlight. I'll show you, this is my UV light, and this is like the brightest UV light of all time. You can probably spot, you know, leaks from space with this guy. But I'll give you a little example here. And I keep it wrapped up because you keep it nicer. But that's pretty bright. For that UV is light. extremely bright. <laughs> this is why I bought. This is on Coon Trucking. He was showing this. He was on the Snap On truck one day, and they were showing this thing. I'm like, I'm buying one. I call. I talked to the Snap On guy like the next week, and he's like, Oh yeah, we're selling you one. Yeah, I usually only see them that bright when they're plug in. I've not seen a cordless one that bright. Yeah. So I do keep it wrapped up. I don't use it a ton. But I do keep it wrapped up. Um, it's just one of those things. It's just I like my stuff to look nice, and I like it to be nice. And, and a lot of times, this guy gets put inside of a car too. Like when you're working on an evaporator housing or something like that. I mean like this guy goes into a car and it comes with some UV goggles and you know. oh, I'm just a dork. Like I said, if you don't like boxes or blow mold cases, you're not gonna like my toolbox. So I know a lot of guys like even Robert, you know, they just, they get a blow mold case and they 86 that thing immediately. Yeah, a lot of guys do. Here's like, oh, man, killing me. My, uh, my left brain is just going insane. Uh, this is a power flush gun right here. And I've actually used this a couple times on heater cores and it works pretty good. Um, as you can tell, it's still kind of dirty-ish, but uh, it, uh, and like I said, I had a I had an older Chevy truck from like the 1980s. It was like a flip truck of mine, 
and uh, the heater didn't work real well and I went and I back flushed it with this guy and oh man it was like night and day difference so that was a good that was a good purchase um sometimes you'll see parts boxes in my toolbox I don't I'm not storing parts what it is this is a jumper or this is a cable set for my or for my uh timing light so that's just you know it just keeps it from the cables being all strewn about and getting damaged um there's the light. This is the laying small caliper press. It works good. Like I said, I keep it in the box. Keeps it clean. Keeps you know most of the rust off it. You see a little bit of rust on there as I as I talk. I am proven wrong. Um, but once again, I like keep it in the box. It's just you know keeps everything nice. These are some of those pads you can do like the buffing and stuff with the that one angle grinder. I don't or that one right angle die grinder. Whatever they call it, the snap on one. Yeah, but I don't use them. I don't do any kind of headlight restoration. This is a this is a warranty job that I never got warrantied from my Snap-on guy. This hose actually started leaking, and it was supposedly supposed to be warranty, and they never warrantied it. But that was like a couple Snap-on guys ago. So that's just a good reminder of why you stay on top of your stuff. This is a scope on a rope. It's a regular test light. These are this is an empty box here. The, that's actually in my roll cart, and this is an empty box here. That's actually in my roll cart as well. Um, I've got this guy, this is on the Mac Promo, this is part of the drill pump, it's one of those deals where you can go and fill up the dipstickless transmissions. The reason why this one I didn't open is because the shop's got a dirty one, so why would I uh, dirty up mine? Yeah. <laughs> it's just me and one of the guys that work here, so, you know, like, why would, why would I do that? Um, this is a, I think this was gear wrench primer, and this is for holding, you know, taking the, the fan shrouds off of off of or the fan, I'm sorry, the fan clutches off of like most domestic trucks and some European cars. This works good right here though. The, what I use this lot on is when I'm setting preload on rear differentials, I hold the yoke with this because I'm able to put leverage on it while I'm, you know, setting a yoke and then I just unbolt it and I can take it off but it works great and it doesn't damage the threads and the bolts for the yoke. So that's what I use it a lot for, but I do use it every once in a while for fan clutches. But a lot of times I use my pneumatic fan clutch tool. this guy when you use your pneumatic hammer and I'm gonna show you guys a trick if you don't know this but I watched a lot of guys do this and they would go and they would just take this guy and they would put it on there like that and they'd go and hammer it and it would fall off right so what you do is you put it on there and uh hang -huh. uh, so simply it's so effective yeah so not only does it hold it on there so you go slip it on there whenever you're hit, tightening it or loosening it right it doesn't fall off whenever you tighten it or loosen it so you know, a lot of guys don't know that. You know, you'd be amazed at who doesn't know that trick. That's hey, wi that's wisdom hey, and experience yeah. right there. Well, no, it's the power of YouTube because that's where oh. I learned the trick. From. Oh, this isn't this isn't something <laughs> wisdom here. This is something new. But you know, hey, I don't mind sh I don't mind sharing my faults. I mean, like I don't, I'm definitely at fault. All right, so this is like one of my least used tools, but at least it paid for itself. So <laughs> <laughs> this is the Master Alternator Pulley Service Tool Set, and this thing gets used like once in a blue moon. Hey, the first time I ever used this, I had to do a service call on a Hyundai. And the second time I ever used it, I had to do another service call on a different Hyundai. <laughs> well, I'm not kidding. But it, 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 it ish paid for itself. It's not the, you know, like it's not one of those things that I'm just going to go reach for. And I could probably have done the repairs with the triple squares out of my triple square set. But I was like, mm, I'd rather have the right tool for the job. So that's why I got that. Not everything's a slam dunk or a home run, but you know, sometimes they work out for you. All right, so that's the end of the box. Let's go over to my cabinet over here. 